What if I told you one of the most scenic ferry trips that you can take in Canada is also one of the busiest? Well, not as scenic as the inside passage between Port Hardy and Prince Rupert, but still beautiful nonetheless. The sailing between Vancouver and Victoria, or more specifically Tawasin and Swartz Bay, is one of the busiest ferry crossings in Canada. Even though there's no real statistical data on this, this route connects the two biggest metropolitan areas in British Columbia. Today, I'm off to Victoria to do a bit of cycling around the peninsula. Alrighty, good morning. It is currently quarter to six right now. I'm trying to make the seven o'clock sailing to Swartz Bay and seeing if I can make it there in time. Now that being said, they do cut off uh, any walk-ons and cyclists about 10 minutes of four, so I got about seven minutes to spare. Just coming up on the Tawasin First Nations. Should make it there in time, but we'll have to see. Approaching the Tawasin Ferry Terminal is all done via the causeway on Highway 17, and is just over two kilometers long from the mainline. Normally walk-on bike tickets are purchased at the vehicle booth, but seeing as the dedicated lane wasn't open yet, I just did the walk-on terminal. Plus, I didn't really want to cut off a bunch of drivers. And just as expected, I missed the 7 a.m. sailing. Luckily, there's a sailing to Victoria every hour. While waiting for the 8 a.m. sailing to open, let me explain why I'm actually remaking this video. So four years ago, I made a video on how to take your bike on BC Ferries, and it was all shot on my phone. Granted, it wasn't filmed properly and it wasn't very descriptive, it was still somewhat informative. And funny enough, I received a comment on it a couple months ago, saying I should go more in depth with the cycling routes and how to get to and from the terminal on each side, and what route options are available. So that's what I'm doing now. And here we are. We are currently on Strava right now, and this is what I typically use to build all my routes. Now just forgive me here, I'm going off live with no script here, but um, I'm, I'm gonna show the Victoria side for now, and then I'll get to the Vancouver side uh, at towards the end of the video. So anyways, um, here's the total route of the Victoria Peninsula. And right now, if you can see at the bottom here, it's a distance of just shy of 35 kilometers with an elevation gain of just over 100 meters with an elevation loss of 128. So this is actually net downhill and it's a very easy and cyclable route. And it's um, even easiest for the most novice people out here. Now I have it starting <clears throat> right at the overpass uh, at Lands End, Lands End Road right before, uh, right at the first exit where you come off the ferry. You'll see that later on in the video. And this is just starting right at the top of the overpass. And then you just kind of follow along the Pat Bay Highway until you turn off into the neighborhoods of Sydney here. Now traversing Sydney is actually very easy. You should actually move this route to right there. That seems a lot better. So you just head, log, head down along 5th and then at that point you're on Lockside, Lockside Drive. And that's kind of where, for the most part, the trail starts. And then you kind of go by a Motel 8, some gas station. There's also um, there's also a McDonald's there. And then you're just kind of following, you're just kind of following the Lockside Trail for the most part along the whole way. The whole way along this section here, it's like packed gravel that's still very easy to ride. There's lots of farms. It's very scenic. And then even back here on the ocean, that's what makes so, this trail so great. And then it's so easy to navigate this trail. This part right here is very easy to navigate. It's lots of marked signage. Then once I get to the sandwich area, it's actually kind of in, um, in a trench in a bit. And that's also very easy to navigate. You can't get lost. And you kind of go past the Selkirk Water into the Squai Mall area. And then you're pretty much in downtown Victoria. It's so easy to navigate. Cycling in the Victoria Peninsula in this whole section here is fantastic. What I did a few weeks ago is I actually went along Land's End and then went around this part of the Patricia Bay through one of the reservations along here and along the Victoria Airport. Along the side along Sandwich Road, absolutely beautiful, very rolling, very scenic. I, I can't get enough of it going through Squamalt, a little bit of Langford area, and then this part of Oak Bay is also fantastic to be cycling to. Now that being said, if you just want to go to and from downtown Victoria, it honestly could be more simpler on the bike. But anyways, back to the video. But anyways, that's enough cycling details for now. Let's get back into the actual ferry sailing to Victoria. Tickets can be purchased up to 10 minutes before the sailing at either the counter or self-serve kiosk. 
the one-way fare to Victoria is $19.10. This is also a fixed fare, and it doesn't change due to demand. Also, the bike levy has been removed. If you're walking on, there are full interior waiting rooms at each berth, but if you got a bike, you can head outside to the lineups. There are marked walkways, which makes it easy to navigate the whole terminal. If you want to get a proper bite to eat before the sailing, the Tawasin Key has tons of food and shopping options available. You can also access this if you're a walk-on passenger. Every berth waiting room has access to the main waiting lot. About 30 minutes prior to departure, the arrival of my sailing to Swartz Bay pulls into berth 5. The ship taking me over is the Coastal Celebration, delivered new to BC Ferries in 2008, and is the newest ferry operating this route. I was lucky enough to take this ship both ways, so all the interiors will be the same. That being said, the interiors across the main Metro Vancouver sailings are almost identical, aside some minor differences here and there. Walk-on boardings are done via a level gangway bridge, versus taking your bike, where you enter via the lower car deck. And the best part, you get to ride your bike on the deck. There are some bike racks there, but these easily fill up on busy summer days. DC ferries suggest lock up your bike, but passengers aren't allowed in the enclosed lower deck during the sailing. I personally felt fine leaving my bike here. On the way to Victoria, I opted to use the Sea West Lounge. I'll show you the rest of the ship on the sailing back to Vancouver. If you really want a quiet place to stay, this is the Old Pacific Buffet, now just a general seating area. The Sea West Lounge is a paid lounge very similar to what you'd find in an airline lounge. It costs $14 to enter for the sailing and features a complimentary selection of coffee, tea, orange juice, yogurt, and other pastries and danishes that you'd typically find in an airline lounge. Shortly after taking my seat, we departed on time for a 90 minute crossing over to Swartz Bay. We'd like to welcome you aboard the Coastal Celebration. We want you to enjoy the journey and be safe. What isn't that great about the lounge is the seats are pretty much the same ones that you find throughout the whole ship. Plus, there aren't too many power outlets. But the food offerings were just okay. I had two servings. But you know what's so great about this lounge? The peace and quiet. Not to mention the amazing views too. When sailings get very busy, and I mean very busy, it can get loud and obnoxious. Plus, there's always kids running around everywhere. $14 for some proper peace and quiet, plus some half decent food, which is worth it in my books. I definitely paid more for some airline lounges that had roughly the same offerings. After crossing the Salish Sea, we come across the biggest highlight of this trip, sailing through Active Pass. This is a small channel separating Maine and Galliano Island. It's fairly narrow, yet has enough space for two ships to pass each other simultaneously. If you're ever given the opportunity, visiting the southern Gulf Islands in the summertime is truly beautiful and relaxing. I'm personally overdue to visit myself. Now this is a first for me, but this is not routine on every sailing. The entire crew was practicing a man overboard drill and the whole ship came to a standstill. All the action was taking place on the outside deck, but it was still pretty cool to see the vessel come to a complete stop in open water. Luckily for all this, we were running early anyways, so I had zero issues with this at all. Shortly after we started to move again, it wasn't too long before we entered Swartz Bay. Prior to docking, the main lower car deck door is open and all the bikes leave first.
When leaving the terminal on the Swartz Bay side on your bike, you are pretty much thrown right onto the Pat Bay Highway, but there's a turn off right after the first overpass. This is the start of the Lockside Trail that heads straight to downtown Victoria. Well, over 100 kilometers of cycling and over 2,000 calories burnt later, it's time to head back to Tawasin. When taking your bike on BC Ferries leaving Victoria, it's a lot more accessible for cyclists but it's a little out of the way on Dolphin Road. And what I should have done when I first left this morning, you can just use the first available booth. Once when you have a ticket, you just head straight down to the berth. I showed up at the terminal about 15, 20 minutes prior to departure time. So unfortunately I didn't have time to show you around the whole Swords Bay terminal. That being said, there's a good order and sit down cafe and restaurant, along with a small open air market in the summertime. Unlike being one of the first to board coming here, I was the last to board. Right before you get on the vessel, there's a controlled gate, so you don't enter the vehicle ramp. Once loading is done, a staff member will radio to get it open for you, if it's closed. On such a beautiful and warm day, I couldn't pass up on staying on the outside deck for the majority of the sailing back. This is a perfect place to spend time during the sailing, although it gets windy and it's not the greatest in inclement weather. The rest of the ship features lots of adequate seating, a gift shop with clothing, toys, and other convenience items you might need. There's also a small cafe featuring Starbucks and a handful of small snacks, but I didn't get around to filming it unfortunately. This wasn't here the last time I took this route, but there's a handy transit info board on how to get to and from the terminal on either side, plus on how to pay. Because BC Transit Agency is pretty limited and for the most part just accepts cash. Anyways, to the good stuff, the food. After cycling so much, a bacon cheeseburger was calling my name. The cafeteria on board has a lot of different options from White Spot, a Western Canadian restaurant chain. There's also beer for purchase too. Look, I've had my fair share of fairy food over many years, but I'm not gonna lie and say this was the best burger I've ever had on BC Ferries. That's what a quiet sailing will do for you. Speaking of which, this sailing was at 2pm on a Monday afternoon, so it wasn't busy at all. But come the weekend or holidays, that completely changes. In my previous video about BC Ferries, I mentioned that they were having a lot of shortcomings last summer. It was honestly very bad and some of the worst I've ever seen come from the corporation. As for this summer, it's been smooth sailing so far. Yeah, bad joke, but in complete honesty, it's been a lot better this year so far. A total night and day difference. They've had some small hiccups out of their control, like weather and major accidents on the way to the terminals. But either than that, pretty good so far. I highly recommend taking the ferry to Victoria. It's a great city to visit, with lots to do, and taking this route will always be a highlight for myself and many others. So back to the cycling. Anyways, if you're wanting to cycle all the way to the city of Vancouver, it's not that great because of the Massey Tunnel. So you're either having to take the Alex Fraser Bridge and backtrack through Burnaby, or just taking the bus. Or there's a bike shuttle as well that takes you through the Massey Tunnel. Granted, this is pretty infrequent. Luckily in the summertime, 
TransLink runs a special bus outfitted with interior bike racks. Or if that's not available and the regular 620 bus racks are full, you can cycle about 4 kilometers down Highway 17 and catch the 601. Look, it's not the greatest options, but it's the best available until the new replacement tunnel gets built. But that's enough rambling for one video. I really hope this video provides some good insights and info about taking your bike on BC Ferries, and just taking the sailing to Victoria in general. So if you found this video helpful or enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more future videos. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next one.